Hello, my name is Swaroop Ravel and I'm going to share some very interesting ideas with you. Daring to teach in the tough days of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to begin with this idea that the educator must be awake, critical, open to the world. It's an honor and a responsibility to be a teacher in such dark times, to imagine and to act on what we imagine, what we, what we believe or to at last be. There is a great sense of desperation, as I wrote in my reflective journal, April 7, 2020. First, the announcement of the 21 day lockdown and then the 15 day extension as the death toll rose. Unprecedented drastic measures used to try to halt the spread of the, the virus. Fear mounting as schools and colleges shut down with no exception. In August 2020, the same year I wrote, schools and colleges continue to remain closed, but online and distant classes continue. This all was very scary for me because I am a life skill educator. I use experiential learning that is drama in education to teach. I believe in dialogue and negotiated learning. For years, I've been in conflict with the banking style of education that's prevalent in most schools and colleges in India. But before I explain banking style of education, I would like to talk about the new normal. What is the new normal? Suddenly that's the word that's become standard and expected everywhere. Just a flick back, it was 21st century skills critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity. Now all that is forgotten and the new normal is lockdown, quarantine, physical distancing, masks, online learning and technology that's omnipresent. But is technology omnipresent? Um, I don't think so. The internet presence is only 27% in the Indian households and only 47% of them have computing devices. Lack of human contact makes collaborative learning very difficult. You're talking to a screen or a camera. And then uh, the one that affected me most was the lack of opportunity for experiential learning no possibility of dialogue. The thing is, classes should not be lecture classrooms online. We think that, you know, by giving activities or, you know, using slides, we are being very progressive, you know, well-planned sequence of activities for active engagement, allow the learner opportunity for interaction and hands-on experiential learning. All of this is just lacking in the classrooms today. So I asked myself the question, how can I improve my practice as a teacher by developing expertise in online teaching? How can I carry out an online lesson and yet ensure that it's learner-centered? How can I demonstrate a nexus between art and learning in a Masters of Social Work classroom? Of course, I'm talking of a Masters of Social Work classroom, but this is applicable in all classrooms. I asked myself the question, how do I improve what I am doing? How do I improve my practice? How do I improve the process of education here? I used action research. Action research is participatory, democratic. It is concerned with developing practical knowledge in the pursuit of a worthwhile human purpose. It seeks to bring together action and reflection, theory and practice. In participation with others, you see that's what collaboration is all about. 
It's about finding practical solutions to issues that concern us. And more generally, the flourishing of individual persons and the community. So this was something that really works for me because I was in search of answers to problems arising from the questions like improving a life skill education curriculum to amend my instructional strategy from using drama in education to using effective online strategy. The intention of developing or advancing my professional knowledge, becoming an efficient teacher by enabling democratic and negotiated classroom in spite of it being online. That was the challenge. Using Magnif's ideas and views on action research, I made my plan. When she talks of reviewing our current practice, I'm talking of observing and reflection, identifying an aspect we want to improve. I understood this as reflection. Imagining a way forward, I understood it as planning. Trying it out, I used it as act. Taking stock of what happens after we acted on it. Observing, modifying our plan in the light of what we have found and continuing with the action. First reflecting on what we have done, then planning, then acting. Then observing again, reflecting again, planning a new action and so on. I followed this, reflect, plan, act, observe, reflect, cycle of action research. I used art because I believe art could teach us how to restore order over chaos. I created a life skill education cur curriculum that centered on this idea of art. For me, art means action, reflection, transformation. I believe if I was to follow the new normal, I would need to look at new medias, a new tool of art. And some of the new medias were radio, television, films, computer, and so on. I decided to use all of them. I changed my classroom from drama and education. I started using cinema and education. Cinema in education is a great way of teaching online because it rises above traditional and orthodox methods of teaching. Unlike text, movies enable students to learn visually. Films have a universal language. Another in thing, interesting aspect about this is it caught my students' attention. It helped me keep them interested in the classroom and prevented them from getting distracted. Another boon was learning disabled. Learning disabled children who have problem understanding the test, text can respond very well to movies and relate to them. But that is an important aspect and that of my learning. Uh, for me, it was creative, yet it was hard work. I improved my ICT skills, but I also improved my skills of editing clips. I watched so many films, and then after watching them and recording them, I edited them. So as to record only the bit that was relevant. That way, I improved my uh, practice in editing, and I could then deliver just the right amount to my class. Another thing that improved was my teaching and delivery style. Because when I watched my videos, I could look at my failures and see what I was doing wrong. I could see where I was losing my students. For example, when I used a lot of slides, I realized that I was losing my students. So I cut down on the PowerPoints and made them much shorter or sometimes just didn't bother to use them. 
I used more drama games to make it very interesting. The only thing is I changed the drama games and made them online. Why am I sharing this? Because I believe when a teacher shares the experience of her practice, she is supporting a knowledge creating culture. I believed that in spite of being online, I enhanced my students' 21st century skills while sustaining the new normal. My classes were not lecture classes online, but active learning classes online. An online class, I believe, should have a well sequenced of activity for active engagement that allows the learners an opportunity to interact with the teacher and each other and have an hands-on experiential learning. You know, some of the most interesting things I did was, um, first of all, I'll share with you some interesting games that I created just to learn listening skills. I uh, made a huge data bank of instrumental songs. Okay, the instrumental versions of popular Hindi film songs. And then the first time I played it, the students were stunned and they really couldn't get things. So I did a fastest finger first and asked them to write in the chat what song they would like to hear or which music, uh, music director or singer they would like to hear. And I remember it was one of my students who, Anuradha, who put um, Rehman. Rahman. And then the, that evening, I had such a tough time finding Rahman songs in the musical version, just the instrumental versions. And then I played them. Now, the second time, my students were getting used to the idea of listening and could grasp a lot of songs. I had made another uh, set of audio tapes for them that were like... Um, sounds, everyday sounds that you hear, like the spoon on a glass or banging on the table or uh, the sound of the bell, um, pressure cooker, doors opening, uh, bells jingling, you know, all these different type of sounds. Uh, I got some on the internet and some I made. And then I would play it for them to identify the sounds. You see, that was experiential learning because they actually had to do the listening, reflect on it, and then give answers. And they learned from their reflection. They learned how to listen. Uh, the thing is, if I just said, now from today, you have to start listening, that's not going to make much sense, is it? Another thing I did to keep on grabbing their attention was I would ask them to answer questions sometimes verbally, just like that. Sometimes I'd ask them to put it in chat and sometimes I would give them a question and tell them to answer the questions in the Google Classroom. I kept on doing things so that I would grab my students' attention and their attention would never ever go. I think my classrooms went really well because my students learned a lot. I remember one sitting and writing all the reflections that happened in the classroom. And I asked her why she wrote it. So she said, you know, all the other reflections are so interesting and sometimes I didn't think of that. So I wrote it down and then I will think about it and do it. And all the learning, one of them used to teach her younger siblings at home. My students really learned a lot because they were so interested in their learning and they were so caught up that they immediately went back home or they went to the NGO they worked with and tried out everything I taught them. Um, there were so many other examples, like the movies that I used to teach them. Uh, I remember there was this film, um, I think The Devil Wore Prada, uh, or Devil Wears Prada, and uh, there is an interview scene where Meryl Streep 
is talking to Anne Hathaway, but she's totally ignoring her. And she's, you know, looking and flipping away in the magazine while Anne Hathaway is talking. That's a bad listening skill. You need to maintain eye contact. And just to show the correct eye contact, I showed them a clip from the web series, um, Bad Men. Yeah, Bad Men. And I showed them that series and then I asked them uh, to identify the difference. So this is what I kept on doing. And I definitely believe I made my classroom an active engagement class. I believe art could teach us to restore order over chaos. Thank you very much. Thank you.